estrogen receptors in the pituitary by means of antiestrogens that is chlorophyll cyclase. What will happen? The pituitary will perceive as if the uh, circulating amount of estrogen is low. So it will increase the FSH secretion and this FSH will stimulate the follicles. But the negative feedback is gone. So there is chance that there may be uncontrolled FSH secretion leading to excessive follicular growth. Another option is exogenous FSH and there is no question of any feedback because it is given from outside. So there is also risk of multifollicular development. Third option is stopping the activity of aromatase by means of aromatase inhibitors. What will happen? The pituitary will secrete the FSH but as the receptors are not occupied, there is some control of pituitary FSH secretion. So the result is monofollicular development. So the risk of ovarian hyperstimulation and the multiple pregnancy are much lower than with other drugs. Now how can you uh, manage a patient with PCOS with anovulation? The lifestyle management cannot be overemphasized because weight is the, uh, the main factor that can affect all the outcomes. The first line of management is still the chlorophyll cyclase, but there are certain patients who do not ovulate with chlorophyll cyclase. So what are the options? One is that you can add metformin, but as you know, metformin is notorious for causing gastrointestinal disturbances. Second option is FSH. As I have mentioned, FSH is associated with risk of hyperstimulation and multiple pregnancy. The third is laparoscopic ovarian delay. Now, apart from the uh, anesthetic and the surgical risk, if you do this ovarian drilling in over enthusiastic way, there is risk that you may damage the actual ovarian functional ovarian tissue and thus you may invite the premature ovarian failure. So, how can you maintain a balance between efficacy and safety? So, the answer is electrosome. The chlorophyll cyclase is very good drug, age old drug, time tested drug. The ovulation rate is 60 to 85 percent. That's quite high. But pregnancy rate, unfortunately, is only 10 to 20 percent. Now, why there is some such discrepancy between ovulation rate and pregnancy rate? Because being anti estrogenic, the chlorophyll cyclase thins out the endometrial lining and decreases the cervical secretion. So it interferes with sperm entry and embryo implantation. On the other hand, Lectrozole is third generation aromatase inhibitors. It was used for uh, long years for uh, uh, breast carcinoma, the estrogen receptor positive breast carcinoma. Mitwali et al. first reported the use of this uh, Lectrozole as aromatase inhibitor in ovulation induction. And they published uh, their reports in uh, the Journal of Fertility and Sterility in 2001. And they found that compared to chlorophyll citrate, the lectrosol is associated with thick endometrium in, and is also associated with better pregnancy response. So they concluded that yes, lectrosol has better outcome in terms of pregnancy and life birth rate compared to chlorophyll. Now, various other studies, some of which have been carried out, one this uh, study by Banerjee Ray uh, et al. that was carried out in Kolkata in medical college and another study uh, by Professor Paul Kumar Roy, it, it was carried out in All India Institute of Medical Sciences, all concluded that ovulation rate, pregnancy rate, life birth rates, all were better in lectrosal group compared to chlorophyll group. Now, this is a meta-analysis, so the quality of evidence is very good. These authors concluded that is the life birth rate as well as the pregnancy rates are better with electrosol than with chlorophyll. And there was no difference between these two groups in terms of ovulation rate, multiple pregnancy rate and miscarriage rate. So the electrosol is definitely superior to chlorophyll citrate. Now what is about electrosol versus laparoscopic ovarian drilling? Apart from the inherent problems with laparoscopic ovarian drilling that I have already mentioned, Lectrozole is found to be better in terms of inducing ovulation, in terms of pregnancy rate and improving the life birth rate. Now tamoxifen, many people prefer tamoxifen in case of chlorophyll cyclase. But remember, tamoxifen's mechanism of action is essentially as same as chlorophyll. So please don't expect that tamoxifen will act where there is chlorophyll resistance. And the evidence is also supporting it that is lectrozole is better than tamoxifen in terms of pregnancy rate and ovulation rate. In some cases, you have to take the help of gonadotrophins, especially for long-standing infertility and some obese women. Now, whether to use gonadotrophin alone or to add lectrosol with gonadotrophin. If you add lectrosol with gonadotrophin, there is uh, the duration of treatment is less, and you uh, the patient will require less amount of agent, so the cost will also be less. 
So the electrode in combination of HMG is better than HMG alone to reduce the risk of ovarian hyperstimulation and multiple pregnancy and overall the pregnancy rate is better. Now what said by the guidelines? ACOG 2016 recommended that electrode instead of globin cyclate should be the first line of treatment in PCOS and ovulation, particularly in OS patients. In all other guidelines, guidelines published by WHO, some Australian and some other American guidelines, they recommend that yes, Globifin or Lectrozone, anyone can be used depending on the resources and the individual circumstances. Now, it's very well absorbed, not dependent on food and more importantly, the half-life is less, that is only 45 hours compared to Globifin. So, it does not have any long-lasting uh, long effect on body compared to now, how to use it? The standard dose is 2.5 mg because more than 2.5 mg is not recommended for population induction and the duration of therapy is limited to uh, 3 months. So, start from day 3, continue up to day 7. So, total 5 days th therapy. Now, it's preferable to monitor the follicular growth with the help of TVS from day 9. But the TVS monitoring is not as mandatory as in case of FSH or Tomifin because the risk of ovarian hyperstimulation is lower. Still, TVS monitoring is preferable. And when with TVS you find that the follicular size is more than 18 mm and the endometrial thickness is more than 7 mm, you can use the HCG trigger and you can plan IUI 24 to 36 hours after HCG stimulation or advise the couple to have time with the course in that time. Now again I am reiterating the advantages of electrozole over Tomifin citrate that is it's having short half life, the better endometrial response and the cervical secretion is better, uterine blood flow is better and the risk of OHSS and the multiple pregnancies are significantly lower with electrozole compared to Tomifin citrate. So in a nutshell, electrozole is associated with better pregnancy outcomes and higher life birth rates compared to Tomifin citrates. It's effective even in patients who are Tomifin resistant, that is who are not ovulating with highest dose of Tomifin, that is who are not ovulating even with the use of 150 mg of Tomifin. And if when used along with gonadotropin, it reduces the gonadotropin dose, so reduces the cost and reduces the risk of adverse effects associated with gonadotropins. The monofollicular developing is of, of course uh, an advantage in terms of lower risk of multiple pregnancy. And there is no anti estrogenic effect on endometrium and cervical mucus. And there is less chance of cycle, can cycle cancellation and hyperstimulation. And there is no doubt about the safety because the government of India has now again approved the electrozone in population induction. So that's all. Thank you very much for your patience.